Okay. So today we will be painting this little guy. This is an oil painting actually, and a really fun oil painting, if I can digress for a minute, because I used a palette knife. So there's all this texture on this painting. Um, but we're gonna translate this into watercolor. I also have the original reference photo up on my computer here, so we can kind of work off of this as well. You feel free to screenshot this now if you wanna keep it on your phone. I will hold it here for a minute or two for, so you can screenshot, um, but this is a perfect, painting or a perfect reference photo for watercolor as well because I love all these soft um, like color transitions and the pastel colors with the contrast of the silhouette of Haystack Rock. So um, yeah, feel free to screenshot. I really like this one. Um, and we will go ahead and get started. Um, so like I said, this one is oil paint, but we're going to be working with watercolor today. So I've got my paper this is Strathmore watercolor paper. Um, it looks like this in the front. Um, this is a pretty cheap, it's pretty cheap watercolor paper, but it does a good job. Um, so if you want some paper just to practice, this is a great option for you. My paints are Windsor Newton watercolors. You don't have to use these, you can use whatever you like, but those are the ones that I use all the time. And then my paint brushes are mostly Princeton Neptune here. That's the brand. Um, and I've got a few different sizes here. I've got a couple larger ones, a smaller one. And then this detail brush is the Christy Rice brush. Um, she is a TikToker and an artist as well. And she sent me these Art for Joy's Sake brush collection. So this one's from this uh, set here. And I really like these brushes too. So would recommend. Uh, and then I've got my little water cup, paper towels, uh, pencil, all that other stuff, the household supplies. So we will go ahead and get started here with um, drawing out kind of our horizon line, a little bit of a sketch here. Um, I'm going to use a ruler just to keep this quick, but if you wanna just take your pencil and do a regular line straight across, we're gonna go about a third of the way up the paper here. So something like that. Doesn't have to be exact. Something at the bottom third-ish of the paper. And as I go through this today, um, I will try to go to pace that works for everybody. I do have to kind of keep it moving um, so that we can get through this in about an hour. So if I do happen to leave you behind, just know that this live will be uploaded to YouTube. So you can always, um, you can always go back and watch this later. Um, the other thing that we need to do is get a little bit of water in each of our watercolor pans. So I'm just going to take my brush and put a little drop of water in each of my pans here, especially if you're working with dry watercolors, this is what you want to do before you start painting, just so that it gets those colors dissolved and it makes it so much easier to work with. We might not use all of these colors, but it's just good to have them ready just in case. Oh, nice. Yeah, I really like her um, art supplies. This water cup that I'm using too here is from her as well. It's, it's a nice little silicone water, co water cup. Okay, can we also use tape for the horizon line? Yes, and I was gonna get to that. So if you want to, um, and I probably will, you can put a piece of tape underneath the horizon line here. And that will give you a perfectly even horizon line without having to paint so carefully around it. So would recommend if you have some tape handy, it is not necessary though. There we go. Um, also, as we go through this, just remember that this is all for practice. We are just doing this for fun. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you have a good time, but don't be too concerned about like getting a perfect painting here. We're just painting for about an hour. Um, and especially if you're new to watercolor, it does take practice. So don't be too hard on yourself um, and just enjoy the little hour that we're spending together. Okay, I'll give you one more second to get um, set up here. Again, this is what we're painting, but a watercolor version of this. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we're going to do is this sort of really pretty sky gradient, and we need a few colors before we get started here, so we're going to mix those colors first. So the first color that we need is a nice sky blue. I like to mix ultramarine blue and phthalo blue. Just kind of creates a nice sky blue color, maybe a little bit more ultramarine than phthalo blue. 
and you want to add a little bit of water but let's keep this color fairly strong to start out with so something like that right there and then we need a super super light uh, like peach color so we are going to do I'm just gonna clean that up there I like to mix together um, orange and pink for a peach color. So I'm just gonna do a little pink and a little orange and then add lots of water to this. We wanna water this down pretty aggressively. We don't want this to be a um, saturated color at all. So add lots of water. And as we go through this too, if you want to double tap that screen, um, if you're just watching especially, it sends me likes and it helps me out with the algorithm here on TikTok. So if you have a minute, double tap the screen. Okay, and then the last color is going to be more of like a lavender color. So we're going to do ultramarine blue, a little bit of pink, and a little bit of brown. And kind of mix those three together until we get kind of an earthy lavender color something like that so that was blue a little bit of pink and a little bit of brown until you get a little lavender color add some water to that too and that should look something like that so that's our sky palette here these three colors yours do not have to match mine exactly and i'll give you a minute to catch up the paint holder this guy is from windsor newton and the brush is a half inch oval brush that I'm using right now but I'm probably gonna switch to an even larger brush pretty soon here okay actually I can probably make it work so once you have those three colors what we're going to do is create a gradient in the top two-thirds of this paper so everything above the horizon line um, what we're going to do is start with that blue color at the top and we're gonna fill in the top with that blue color and then start to mix in some water and that will lighten up that blue color a little bit and then we'll switch that peach color and then switch the purple color at the horizon at the horizon line um, and hopefully if we can do all of that somewhat quickly we will get a fairly even nice gradient for the sky here so i will show you and i will give you time to catch up afterwards if you want to just watch me at first okay so we're gonna start with, use a large brush, use the largest brush, brush that you have or that you feel comfortable with. And we're gonna use horizontal strokes to fill in the top like third of the sky section with this blue, something like that. Then you're going to quickly just dunk your uh, brush in your water. You don't really need to like swirl it around too much, but just dunk it. That'll lighten it up, do it again keep moving fill in about two-thirds of the page this way and you can go back up and do a little blend if you need to but don't worry too much about the texture that's just part of watercolor okay then wash your brush off and quickly switch to the peach color fill in about half of what's left here and then switch to that purple color and fill in the rest. And again, you can use a clean, damp brush to go over this section and blend it together a little bit better. But try not to overwork it. It doesn't need to be like perfectly blended. Okay, so something like that. I'm gonna let that sit little hair in my painting. Let's see if I can get that out of there. There we go. I'm gonna just let that sit and we're gonna let it dry. And then we will move on. So go ahead and do that. What's the difference when the paper is wet or dry? That's a good question. So uh, when the paper is dry, you will get a stronger color because it's not mixing with any water on the paper. Um, you will also have a little bit of a harder time like getting a really super good blend. And it works fine like in stages like this when we just need the background a nice soft sky color. Um, but it, you'll get more crisp, harsh lines um, when you're working on dry paper. If you put down a layer of water, 
your colors will be lighter. They'll dilute a little bit more because they're mixing with that water on the paper, and they will also spread out a lot. You'll get a lot of really soft and diffuse edges. You won't get any details, um, and it's just kind of like a, a sort of mess of color that ends up happening. Um, so both are good, and you kind of use both in watercolor um, for different things, but I like to do these um, skies with on dry paper just because it gives me a little bit more control of like where the colors are gonna go. Um, what's the best beginner palette? Uh, there are quite a few. I don't know if I can say like definitively the best one. Um, there are quite a few out there that are marketed towards beginners and that are great for beginners. Um, I work with Artistro, they have some good beginner palettes. Um, I think Grabby has a decent beginner palette. Um, I really like the Koi, the Sakura Koi palette. Um, yeah, I've got an Amazon storefront linked in my bio, so if you want my full list of art supply recommendations, you can check that out too. I need to remember not to overwork it with watercolor. Yeah, me too, honestly. <laughs> Paul Rubens, yeah, sure. I've never tried that one, but um, I've heard good things. Thank you all for the likes, by the way. We're up to 8.6 thousand likes, so that's pretty cool. I appreciate it. Um, once you're done with the sky as well, we can take off the tape at the horizon line. If you find that your tape rips your paper, heat it up with a hairdryer first for a few seconds before you pull it. That'll help. Okay. And then uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to do a little reflection in the... Um, on the bottom half here. So if you can see in the reference photo, we have the sky, we've got the a little sliver of like, oh, just kidding, a little sliver of water here, and then the rest of it is a pretty good, good reflection of uh, what's happening above. So we're gonna have some purple color here, a little bit of pink and peach and yellow. So we're gonna do that next, and then we can paint the sand and stuff over the top of that later. Okay. So, once you're ready, we are going to mix one more color in our palette here, but don't get rid of any of those sky colors. And we just need a sort of blue-gray. So I'm gonna take some of this sky blue here and add a little bit of gray to it. Oh, that was a lot of gray, so a lot of gray apparently. And we're gonna water that down. We don't want that to be too dark. Add less gray than I did, please. Okay, so something like that. You can see that gray now compared to that blue. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put this gray color as the ocean section. So it's gonna be a little bit over here. I'm just gonna kind of start putting this in. It's gonna match up with the horizon line. Don't feel like it has to be perfect. And as we work toward the right, it's gonna take up just a little bit more of the page. Really not much, that ocean is pretty far away, but you can just press down a little harder with your brush when you're over here to the right. Can you see all this? There we go. Okay, let's let this dry for a minute. Would watercoloring make pen ink runny? Yeah, it depends on the pen. Um, if you have a waterproof pen or an alcohol-based pen, it will usually stay, um, even if you paint over it with watercolor, but some pens will, will uh, run, so you gotta test that out with your supplies. Okay, let's see. I think we can, we'll just take a little, a quick little break here. I might 
hit this with my hair dryer really quick, so I apologize for the noise. Keep things moving a little bit why did you add brown um let's see did i add brown i might have added a little brown to that uh gray color i don't remember specifically but um that gray that i have that Payne's gray is super blue toned it's very cool toned and brown is a warm color and so because i wanted it to be a little bit more of a neutral gray just a little bit i added a little bit of brown um Sorry, I didn't say that out loud. That's something that I did without thinking about it. Um, yeah, it's just to neutralize that super intense blue of the gray and make it a little bit more neutral. I can actually show you what I mean here if you want to see. So this is the Payne's gray here. That's just the straight color of Payne's gray. And then I add a little bit of burnt sienna creates more of a neutral gray. You can see that color difference there. If I add even more, it creates more of a warm gray. Do you see that difference there? So it's not to make it darker, it's to make it, uh, it's to tone it to more neutral, more of like this color. Um, yeah, if that makes sense. Okay, let's keep adding to this reflection here. Doesn't appear gray to me. Hmm. That's interesting. Not sure. I can keep going on this gradient. It ends up turning brown on the other end. So there's brown, brown, gray, gray, gray. All just different tones of gray. Do these get posted anywhere after the live ends? Yes, they do. They are posted on my YouTube channel. If you click on the link in my bio, um, you can find my YouTube channel there. Um, it'll take you straight to my profile and uh, all of the lives are uploaded there. So this one um, will be uploaded later today. And then you can also find all of the previous pain sips there too, if you wanna follow along with those. Okay, uh, real quick. So take that uh, purple color that we were using for the sky here, grab a big brush full of it. And then somewhere kind of on the first third of the set of the left side of the paper, we're going to just put down a little bit of gray. And this is going to look weird for now. We're going to cover all this up with darker colors later. So we're just kind of putting a background layer of color down here right now. And we're going to take this over this way just a little bit, something like that. Kind of like that shape. Okay, before that dries, switch to your peach color and add a little bit of that on this end. It doesn't have to be an exact shape, we're just getting kind of a, a reflection of the sky colors down here, so don't worry about the shape too much. And then uh, use a clean, damp brush to fill in the rest here. So we'll have some spots where it's really, really light. And then again, you can use a clean, damp brush to blend those together a little bit if they're, if you have a little bit of a harsh line. Don't feel like it has to be perfect though. Again, we're just getting some colors down in the, in the lower half so that we can have a reflection later. Okay. So we can go ahead and clean up the palette now because we need to have space for other colors. Any idea what your live schedule will be in the future? Um, let's see. So I will be off for a couple of weeks just because it's uh, coming up on Thanksgiving. So I will be off next week and the week after, but uh, the first weekend in December, I will likely be back. So um, 
in what is that three weeks and it's always same time same day so Saturday is at 3 p.m. if you're ever curious if I'm doing a paint and sip you can come check my TikTok account um, I always have the live event little schedule thing on the or little live event notice on my profile so if you are curious I put that up on Thursdays before I do paint and sip so you'll know if I'm doing one a couple days beforehand I will most likely do some snowy themed paintings in the winter that's one of my favorite things to do um, in the winter for these paint and sips so yes there will be one for sure at least one okay our next step here is to uh, add in the haystack rock um, and this is a very specific sort of shape so I'm gonna give you this uh, reference photo here it's this really sort of like bell shaped uh, rock which is what makes it so iconic and note and like recognizable um, so feel free to sketch this if you want but it's really like as long as you get kind of the general shape this bell sort of shape that's really all that it takes to get this to be recognizable. So I'm going to leave this here for now so that you can see it. And I'm going to sketch out where I want mine to go. Something like, and this is a square reference photo when we're doing this on a long sheet of paper. So we're kind of changing it up a little bit, but I'm going to have mine go kind of from here. Up. Can add that little extra rock that's standing in the water there too something like that that looks pretty good okay i grew up in washington state so i've uh visited haystack rock a couple times it's a very cool very cool place Okay, so let's get back to our painting here, or palette, I should say. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush here just to give me a little bit more detail, and we need to mix two colors here. Um, the first color that we need to mix is a very, very dark, we're gonna basically just use Payne's Gray and a little brown, like what I taught you before. We're gonna neutralize it with a little bit of brown so it's not quite as blue but we're gonna add very little water to this color. It's gonna be a very, very dark, basically black. If you have black in your palette and you wanna use that, feel free, that's fine. I don't have black in my palette, so I just have to mix my own. Something like that. And then we need a more of a reddish brown. So I'm gonna use Burnt Sienna, which is this kind of rust color, and some brown. And maybe just a little bit of blue if you're interested in my winter scenes i'm going to do a little plug here while we're mixing these colors i just posted on tiktok and i just added to my etsy shop some new bookmarks i haven't added new bookmark designs in a little while and um they are these so we've got a little magical winter with a lamp a lamp post and a sort of sunlit mountains with some trees um, and these originals are available and the printed versions too, um, which are a little bit less expensive. So if you'd like some of my winter scenes and you'd like some stocking stuffers or, um, you know, a little gift for yourself for the winter, this is a great option for you. And they are in my Etsy shop. So if you click on the link in my bio, my Etsy shop is linked there. You'll see a tab for it um, if you click on that link. So check that out. It means a lot to me if you guys uh, check out my art store always is super helpful that's how I make a living so it is very helpful to me and back to this painting here what we're going to do once you've got your colors mixed is let's start with that lighter brown color that we mixed and we're gonna add this on the right side of the rock here just in a few spots you can start kind of creating the outline here I like to kind of let my hand shake so that it gives you an interesting outline. It's, it's a rock, so it's not gonna be perfectly smooth. And just add a few little strokes of this brown. And then once you've done that, you can fill in the rest with the super dark black color. And if you do that quickly, you should get a good blend between those two colors. Um, and that'll give you a little bit of a highlight and a shadow, a little bit of dimension on the shape here. 
if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna keep filling in here. We can also fill in that little extra rock formation here on the right, just with that black color. There we go. And now we've got a nice silhouette here. What paper do you use? This is a Strathmore watercolor paper. I don't use this solely. I use Arches watercolor paper as well for um, some more like professional projects, um, but for lessons, I usually just use Strathmore. It is indeed Haystack Rock. Good job, everybody. Thank you all for the gifts as well. I appreciate it. And we're up to 14,000 likes, which is great. Thank you so much, everybody. Feel free to keep hitting that like button. Helps me out. Um... And let me know if you're painting along with me, if you're ready to move on, or if you need another minute or two. That'll help me know um, if I'm going too fast or not. And then, uh, and then we'll move on to the last bit of this, which is the reflection down here. Are you gonna do another after this painting? Nope, this is it. A minute more, please. Yep, no problem. I'll just do my usual plugs here. Um, I do, if you click on that link in my bio, there's many things that you'll find there. Um, the first thing is my watercolor book that I have written this year uh, is on pre-order now. And it's basically these live lessons, but condensed into book form. So it's a, a watercolor book full of lessons for you um, of how to paint landscapes, how I do. So uh, if you'd like to, if you're interested, pre-order is available. If you click on the link in my bio, the top link that you'll see is my book pre-order. So um, that would mean a lot to me if you're interested in, in uh, checking out that book feel free to do that. If you do pre-order, you get some uh, fun little bonus content. So that's a little um, extra thing to entice you to do that. Um, and it's also just really exciting that I've gotten to write a book. Very, very cool for me. Um, I also have my Etsy shop linked in my bio. So if you click on that link, you'll find it there. Uh, all of my art that I have for sale is uh, available there. I do have this painting actually available now. Um, this is a oil painting on canvas with some really cool texture. So if you really like this painting, you're welcome to get it. It's available in my Etsy shop. There's no prints or anything. It's just the one original. So if you want it, make sure you check it out quickly. Um, I also have my Patreon in my bio. So it's a uh, s sort of subscription service to me. And if you join, you will get some, at least a tutorial every month, kind of like this, but a, an exclusive Patreon tutorial. And I sometimes use different mediums like gouache or acrylic. So if you're interested in seeing some tutorials from me with different mediums, that's how you can access that. You can also sign up to a different tier and get some art from me too um, every month. So that's always really fun to do as well. So check out my Patreon if you're interested in that. All of my art supply recommendations are in my Amazon storefront. So feel free to look at that if you need some recommendations on art supplies that you like, that I like. Um, and my YouTube channel is linked to my bio as well. So if you like this paint and sip and you want to catch it later, or you want to check out the previous ones, uh, just scroll down to the little tab that says YouTube and that'll take you straight to my profile. So, um, if you're interested in watching the rest of these tutorials, you can find them there and subscribe to my YouTube channel while you're there just to be nice. <laughs> okay. That's all the plugs. Thank you for listening. Uh, oh, one more. If you like today's lesson and at the end you'd like to leave me a little tip or a gift, um, if you click on that link in my bio, there's also a little tab in there that says tip jar and that makes it really easy to just leave me a tip if you'd like. These lives will always be free, but um, tips are super, super appreciated if you feel um, so inclined. So 
that's an option for you there too. And thank you very much if you do end up doing that. What does toning the canvas before painting do? Um, that is a question for probably another time just because I do want to move on with this uh, tutorial here. Typical mediums used, usually it's watercolor or gouache. Sometimes I'll mix in acrylic um, when I'm doing a Patreon tutorial, but usually just watercolor or gouache. Okay, so to move on, we need a little bit more of, let's see, actually, let's see how are we gonna do this here. Nope, we're gonna do the sand first. So we're gonna do the sand. Let me show you what I mean. So if you can see here, we have this these like sand areas that are sort of crisscrossing up on the beach. So we're gonna fill in that color. It needs to be a little bit lighter than the color of the rock here. So we're gonna make a more of a neutral gray, like what I was talking about before. There we go. So let's do a little Payne's gray a little bit of a good amount of brown I should say maybe a little bit of burnt sienna you can even do a little bit of red if you want to just something to make kind of a neutral brownish gray color just kind of mixing several colors together until I get a color that I like add a little bit of water There we go, something like that. My favorite medium, I don't know if I can pick a favorite. I use uh, gouache, watercolor, and oil pretty interchangeably. And I really like all three of them, so I don't know if I can, if I can really pick one. That would be really hard. Okay, so on our paper here, we're going to carve out the shapes of these uh, sandbanks here. So I'm gonna kind of show you and then you can feel free to follow along after I've done it. So we're gonna start up here where this water section is and I'm gonna kind of cut down on this water so that it's just a little sliver showing underneath the rock. And then the sandbank kind of is up going out there. And we can bring that back. So we've got that kind of shape first. And then over here, we get a shape that sort of comes this way. This is where you're gonna need to be brave. <laughs> Put this dark color down. Don't feel like you have to follow what I'm doing exactly here. We're just kind of putting some little sandbanks around the beach and they're kind of these horizontal um, shapes like this. So it will still look uh, realistic even if it doesn't look exactly like mine. And then we'll go kind of like this. That'll be good. And then if you wanna be a superstar, you do not have to do this, but you can. You can take a damp brush and in certain points, just kind of smudge the edge of this sand area. Not everywhere, but just a few spots, just to kind of show that it blends into the water there. You know, you're not the first person to say Morro Bay. This is actually Cannon Beach in Oregon, but uh, you're not the first person to wonder. So I'm just kind of touching that, running that damp brush along the edge of a few spots there. And that just blends the sand in with the water a little bit. And I like to do this on the edges that are facing us. So I'm just doing this on like this edge, this edge, and this edge. The other ones are facing away, if that makes sense. So you wanna leave those alone 
if you can, like this top edge here. You want to leave that alone. Okay. Then, so sad I didn't catch it all. That's okay. It will be, the recording will be uploaded to my YouTube channel a little bit later today. So you can always go follow along with it later. If you click on the link in my bio and scroll down, there's a little tab called YouTube and that'll take you to my YouTube channel. And all of the previous paint and sips are there too. So you can find those. Okay, now the last thing, last-ish thing that we need to do is the reflection of the rock in the, um, the water that's on the beach here. So I'm going to take my pencil and kind of sketch out a uh, mirror reflection, mirror image reflection here of the rock. So I'm just kind of picturing it of this edge flipped uh, upside down and where that would go. So that would go probably about right there. And then we can take that black color that we used to fill in the rock there and fill in. If you want to be extra fancy, you can leave a little sliver of a highlight there. But you don't have to do that. And just fill in in between the sandbanks. And at the edge, you can just give it a little bit of a horizontal strokes like that and or use a damp brush and just blend it a little bit like that. I'm going to do the same thing here. even add a little bit back here if you want to. And then the last little bit is to add this reflection of this rock over here too. So I'm just kind of loosely copying the shape as a mirror image reflection. It's amazing how much I can see now that I've started painting shadows, highlights, colors. You know, I have that same thought and I've been painting my whole life and so this is maybe just always something that I've done, but I don't know that a lot of people notice just kind of, you know, colors maybe or shadows or, you know, things like that the way that I do. I feel like people, a lot of people just kind of go through life without noticing those things and when you paint and you're an artist, that's something that you are kind of trained to see and look at. Um, and it's a really cool way of looking at the world, I think. And a skill as well. Okay, we're getting close here. We've just got maybe one more detail, which is to add a little bit of uh, texture to the water here, just because it's a little bit flat right now. So we're gonna mix a very cool gray, so lots of blue. So I'm doing uh, Payne's Gray and Ultramarine Blue mixed together, maybe a touch of brown. That was too much. There we go. Something like that. There's purple in so many shadows. Yeah, exactly. Purple, blue, um, red sometimes. It's very cool. Okay, with this gray, I'm gonna use my little detail brush here and just kind of go along the, here, I'll zoom you in for this so you can actually see. There we go. And I'm just gonna kind of go along the water section here 
and kind of shake my brush, press down and, and uh, press down in different sort of intervals. And we're just gonna add some little like wave shapes going along here. you want some extra credit, something else you can do is use a clean, damp brush and add a highlight here by scrubbing your clean, damp brush in a, in a little area like this and then tapping it with your paper towel. And that can add little highlights um, for these waves. So again, I'm just using a damp brush, going in between those lines that I just made, scrubbing and then tapping with my paper towel. And you don't want to overuse that because it'll start to lose meaning, but you'll get some cool little highlights that can look like crashing waves. Ooh, I just got an Etsy order. Thank you so much to whoever that was. So sad I missed this. Do you repost lives? Yep, it'll be on YouTube later today. My YouTube channel is linked in my bio. If you click on the link and scroll down, you'll see a tab called YouTube. That'll take you right to my channel. And all of the previous ones are uploaded there as well. Okay. One other thing we can do is add a few little um, extra waves that are kind of coming in past the water line here. see that's getting pretty close to done there let's take a look at the whole thing now we have a couple options for what to do with the sky here and I want you guys to to vote because I'm not sure we can either add some birds or we can add a moon the moon requires white paint but what do you guys think birds or moon so it's inspired by the post on the lamp oh thank you so much I appreciate it Moon, birds, moon, moon, <laughs> birds. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I'm going to be able to decide. It seems pretty split. We don't want to add both just because, um, just because it'll be a little too much. Kind of want to see how you do the moon. <sighs> Area, I know it's an area known for birds. Can I do a poll? Let's see. Quick poll. Perfect. Vote now. Um, okay. Hang on. I've never done this before, so, so give me a minute. Hmm. <laughs> Never mind, that was a mistake. Now I can't see the comments anymore. Oh no. Okay, well, I'm going to, while that's reloading, hopefully you can still see me. Um, I think we're gonna do moon because I've done birds in tutorials in the past. So um, if you are curious as to how I would do that, you can check that out. Um, boy, I really hope you can still see me because I cannot see any of you. <laughs> So I'm gonna use some gouache here. This is my gouache that I normally use. It's called M. Graham. And, um, gosh dang it. There we go. Okay, <laughs> we, got, we got there. Um, we've got M. Graham gouache. I just put a little bit on my palette here. And I'm gonna use a little detailed brush. 
and I think we're gonna do a little uh, full moon and I'm gonna put it right here. And we're just gonna draw a small circle. If you want to do a, a crescent moon or something like that, you're totally welcome to. It'll just be a little wedge shape. But gouache is my favorite way to do this just because I like the matte texture that it has when it's done. If you have acrylic paint, that'll work just fine. Even if you have like whiteout, that'll work perfectly fine too. There we go. So feel free to use whatever sort of opaque white paint that you have to put in a moon. Or if you wanna go rogue and do birds instead, you are welcome to on your own uh, painting. So don't feel like you have to do a moon as well. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the tape and I'm gonna do my usual plugs one more time since you're a captive audience. Um, if you click on that link in my bio, you'll find a few things. First of all, you'll find my uh, watercolor book pre-order. I have made a watercolor book. It is basically these live tutorials in book form. Uh, so it's teaching you how to paint at least like 24 watercolor landscapes. So if you'd like to check out, um, check that out, that is the top link in my bio. Um, and that means a lot to me. If you'd like to pre-order it, it comes out next April, but it is available for pre-order now. And if you pre-order, you'll get some extra uh, like bonus material, bonus content. So that's to incentivize you to do that. Um, and I really appreciate it if you'd like to do that. I also have my Etsy shop linked in my bio. So if you check that out, that's where I sell all of my art. This painting here that we, that this painting that our lesson was inspired off of is available on my Etsy shop, along with my uh, new winter bookmarks, which I just showed you guys earlier today. So these are the originals. These are the prints some pretty uh, winter scenes. And these are perfect stocking stuffers, perfect holiday gifts, all of that kind of stuff, and will be perfect even past the holidays. So I really like these and I hope you do too. If you do, check them out on my Etsy shop, also linked to my bio. I've got my Patreon in my bio as well. So if you want more tutorials, that's where you can find that. If you sign up for my Patreon, I think it's like, it's $3.50 a month, $3.50 a month just to access the tutorials every month. So, um, it's super, you know, it's like a cup of coffee, not in this economy, less than a cup of coffee. So um, if you're interested in that, do sign up for that. Um, and if you would like to leave me a tip or a gift for today's lesson, that is always, always, always very appreciated. Um, and if you'd like to do that, there's a little tab in my link called tip jar. So if you scroll down to that, you'll find that. And that just makes it really easy to leave a tip. And that is always, always, always very um, appreciated if you'd like to do that. Um, and I believe that is everything. 